Je kunt geen muziek maken als je niet kunt tellen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Maar als je nu heel goed kunt tellen en rekenen. Je bent professor in de wiskunde. Begrijp je muziek dan beter? Ja, zegt Jason Brown, die de afgelopen week een gastoptreden gaf op de TU in Delft. Nee, dit is geen rockconcert, maar een lezing van de Canadese hoogleraar wiskunde Jason Brown. Hij combineert zijn twee passies, muziek en wiskunde, en probeert daarmee de geheimen van zijn favoriete band te achterhalen. I think the thing that makes the music of the Beatles so special is the brilliance that went into the songwriting. They have all sorts of tricks that are really mathematical tricks that uh, make the song sound fresh, no matter how many times you've heard it before. Uh, for example, um, George Harrison loved to play patterns of threes against a background of patterns of twos and fours. So in his song, Here Comes the Sun, those little patterns. Four patterns of three, but the background is going on in patterns of four. So our brain is waiting for the patterns of threes to match up with the patterns of fours. And everyone does this, whether they're mathematical or they're not mathematical. They wait for the patterns to align. And if they do align properly, uh, there's uh, relief, there's satisfaction. Our minds are count constantly doing little calculations when we're listening to music subconsciously. We do this whether we're mathematically inclined or we have no mathematical training. Our minds are still built to see patterns just like we see patterns when we look at great artwork, even if we have no mathematical training. And everyone is built to appreciate it and find it beautiful to some extent. In the song, I Want to Hold Your Hand, which was the song, I guess, that broke them in America, uh, they had to come up with a song that would be their best song to date. And it's really quite an exceptional song because um, unlike other rock songs, uh, the, the melody in I Want to Hold Your Hand are, is only notes in the key. Usually in rock songs, you have notes outside the key, blues notes that make it sound rock and roll. But I Want to Hold Your Hand, it's completely in the key. And usually the only songs that have melodies in the key are nursery rhymes. So the question is, why did I Want to Hold Your Hand turn out to be a great rock song rather than sounding like a nursery song? And the thing is, is that listeners, when they listen to a song, one of the things they try to do right off the top is to figure out where beat one is. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So everyone get, wants to get a line to beat one. It's something you naturally want to do. If there are no other clues when you hear the opening of the song, you assume it starts on beat one. So for that, you would think that they're playing one and two, one and two, but they didn't. So they did something very clever. Really what they did was mathematical. They moved it back in time three eighth notes. So it's one, two, three, and four, and. The difference is almost imperceptible until they come to sing the, uh, the, the beginning of the verse. And there you figure out where beat one is, and every listener becomes surprised because they got it wrong. Oh, yeah. I had a number of people who've mentioned to me, doesn't it take away the, from the fun? When you, when you examine it that closely. But um, I derive m even more pleasure from having analyzed it because what I can see in, in, uh, in a variety of different songs, the extraordinary brilliance of the songwriting to the extent that I might not have recognized it before. So when I see these tricks, um, I can say to myself, that's brilliant. It's been a did you ever talk to one of the people who were involved in the recordings, or to a Beatle? No, I would love to talk to one of the Beatles. In particular, I'd love to talk to Paul. What would you ask him? What would I ask him? Um, I would ask him, what were they thinking at different points when they were writing the songs? Did they, did they actively think about uh, doing changes to the melody and transforming the harmony and things like that? Or was it just something natural for them? To what extent? Did they feel it and to what extent did they plan it out?
So what we see is that the harmonics of Paul. I think a lot of the songs that are being played now, no one will be listening to in 10 years' time. As noted by the ancient Greeks. Unlike the Beatles. Unlike the Beatles, I'm sure. 30 years down the road, there will still be people listening to the Beatles, and I think you will f still find young people listening to the Beatles, simply because of the quality of the songs. Nu nog wachten op een wetenschapper die het omgekeerde bewijst: dat je heel goed wordt in wiskunde als je maar genoeg naar de Beatles luistert.